All right, I've got to look at this thing today. It's a leather pouch. Now, inside this leather pouch, there's something a bit more interesting. Let's get it out and see it's visible through the front now. Really old piece of equipment. I don't know exactly what year it is, but it's old. I think it's like 60s, maybe. It's an actual original Mega. Original, made in England. Patent number and everything. Probably follow that actually and find out when it was made, when it was designed. Anyway, you've got some push buttons here for these terminals. So you put wires in the sides. Your ohms and mega ohms selection, and you got a little wind up handle. Now, as you can see, this was $15 from a charity shop. So, you basically wind it up and you'll see the resistance. So, I don't know how accurate this is. I'm going to stick some wires across it and stick some test pieces on it, and we'll try it out. I did play with this originally when we first got it, but I've had it sitting on my desk now for maybe two years. Waiting for me to get around to it. I finally got around to it. So I've got my little test box out here. This dials up to 900k, and this is a mega ohm meter, so we'll see how we go with that. But so I've got 900k in there, so let's blow one mega ohm. Got these probes shoved into the terminals. Let's see what we get when we turn the handle. Does it still work? Look at that. It's actually really close. It's saying about 0.8 to 0.9, depending how I'm moving. Can I stand on this end and have it work a bit more reliably? Do that way. There you go. That, 0.8. So it's out by a little bit, but it's actually working still. That's amazing. And it's still fairly accurate. Okay, let's do the ohm scale. So ohms can go to 100 ohms. So we'll try that one. 100 ohms. Try full scale first. Look at that, it's very slightly out. Really close. Okay, let's do 50. Again, slightly high. 20. Sitting high still, okay. Um, do 10, still sitting high. Five, look at that spec, that's twice as far out there. That's out by a fair bit. Five ohms. So now doing two, you're seeing 10. So that's about eight ohms out. These connections may not be the best for this particular connection, you know, maybe that's part of it. But yeah, I'm seeing about 8 there when it's set to 2, so it's about 6 ohms, so if I set that as a dead short, you're seeing about 3 ohms. But it is actually working. So I'm actually very tempted to open this thing up and have a look inside it. It's got these seals on it. Don't know what they are, but it's sealed. Do I really want to open it up and risk breaking it? Or should I just clean it up a bit and just make it nice again? I mean, looking inside it would be interesting, wouldn't it? The leather case here allows you to operate it inside the case. Well, kind of. Kind of. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because that sticks out the top. So you can still wind it, you just have to pull the, the cover right back. So yeah, it can be operated inside the case. It's got some text on the back there. A E P B. Auckland Electric Power Board, maybe. That'd make sense, wouldn't it? So I spent some time cleaning it up a little bit. And I thought I'd just try a larger resistor. This is a 4.7 mega ohm. I'm going to use a clip lead for this. It's not ideal, but it would give us something. Now, 4.7. <laughs> if it stays in there, you know, it should be, you know, just have a mid scale. Okay, change the setup, try again. There you go. So it's supposed to be 4.7. If I can get the stay stable enough, let's try it this way. Pretty accurate, that's surprising. 
So I suppose your next question is what is it actually putting out? Well, I've got an AC right now and it's doing that speed. It's like 40 volts AC. If I go a bit faster, yeah, sort of bit, still about 40 volts AC. Go to DC, 200 volts at that sort of speed. If I go faster, it's about 300. Faster again, like 400 volts. We're really going for it. So, that give you a bit of a whack, wouldn't it? Now, the question is. Is there a capacitor inside here which needs replacing? The fact we've got AC and DC makes me think that maybe there is a capacitor in there. I might have to go online and see if I can find any drawings for this thing. I don't have a manual for it. I did look originally, I couldn't find anything. But you know, it's the original Mega. I mean there must be information about this. Series 3, Mark 3. So I might go and have another look, see if I can find something this time. I can see there's a capacitor in there, I might have to open it up. Well, yes, there is a capacitor inside there, but it's a 1500 volt capacitor. So, uh, I don't have one of those, so I'm going to bother putting it apart right now, and it is kind of working. I think I might just leave it, because it's been probably mostly okay for the past 60 years, so... Probably another 10 years would be fine. Maybe. I don't know. But because it's a high voltage cap, it's only about 1 millifarad, apparently. Or 0.1 millifarad. Yeah, 0.1 millifarad is what the capacitor is supposed to be. So... I've got nothing like that here, unless I go to a film cap or something instead, different style completely from that. Anyway, I think I might call it that. I hope you found it interesting. Bit of an unusual piece of gear. They're around, but there are not many of them around, I suppose. But yeah, that's where the name Mega came from. It's one of these things. Now you know, if you didn't know before. Guess what?